Hey guys, so this video is part of a multi-part series I'm doing on how to build your own home automation controller. Um, this, the things I'm going to do in this video probably won't work if you haven't followed the previous steps. So click the first line in the description. There is a link to the playlist where all of the videos are. In this video, we're going to be setting up an MQTT to WebSockets bridge, and this will allow us to send and receive MQTT messages via a web page. Um, and then in the next tutorial, we are going to be actually controlling a device using these messages from a web page. So let's get started. I first want to get started by saying I have a GitHub. Woohoo! Um, and here I'm going to be posting uh, basically all the code and everything you need for some of my future videos. As we move forward, some of the code gets a bit more complicated and I want to, I want to get it installed and working and then later on we can actually go back and explain exactly what's going on and what it's doing. So um, for today's tutorial, we can actually need this, which is the only folder on my GitHub right now, which is this hack seven, uh, which is the home automation controller seven, MQDD to web pages is the title of this video. And there is the folder. So you have to just hit this uh, big clone or download button. And uh, then you hit download zip and it will ask you where you want to download it. Obviously I'm going to save it in my downloads. And once it's in your downloads, what you're going to want to do is open your downloads folder, double click on it, on Windows, you might just have to right click and say extract, but extract the zip. And then in there will be all of the code. There's that folder again. Okay, so once you've done that, let's head over to, uh, to the terminal. And uh, there's a few things we have to install first before we can actually get into uh, to doing stuff. And the first one is this Python dev uh, package. And uh, the, the, obviously this will be in the description as well. Uh, you just put that command in, say install. When it asks you, you say yes, and we'll come back once it's done. Okay, so that's done. The next package we need to install is Python pip. And to do that, you again use this command, which again I'll put in the description. And we'll come back once this is done. Okay, so this is done. So then the next thing you want to do is you want to actually, we've just installed pip. Now we want to use pip to install my SQL Python. And again, I'll put this in the description. There we go. So I've actually had it already installed. In your case, you probably won't have it installed. The next thing we need to do is install the Python MQTT, basically, library. And to do that, you use this command. And that is done. So all that does is it downloads the command. So we actually need to go into it. So let's go ls, and we'll see. And there is it there. This is the folder created. So let's go into that folder by cding. And once you're in there, all you need to do is go sudo python set up dot py or py install, and it should install. Now, if you are going to be using Python 3, you would need to go here and then um, change the Python to Python 3, and then obviously run that. But I'm not going to be doing that. OK, so now once that's installed, you're going to need to get another program. Um, on your computer called FileZilla. And um, so I've already got it installed and I've got it already connected. When you first, well, let's connect just so you can see what it looks like. So when you connect, um, well, let's just show you how to use it. In here, you need to put in the IP address of your Pi like you would in normal SSH. And uh, then it's gonna be the username and then your password and then the port you make 22. And that's going to just tell FileZilla it needs to do an SFSP, which is basically, uh, and it's going to like FT FTP tunnel kind of over SSH. So it allows us to look at the files on the Pi. So hit enter, and well, I'm going to tell it to redo the connection. This shouldn't come up. And boom, it's connected. And this, as you can see over here, if I make this bigger, is what's on your, your home directory. Like if you ls this, you'll see it's the same, uh, well, ls here, and you'll see it's the same files are here as well. So what you're going to want to do is in go to your downloads folder and then open up you know the folder you just downloaded, and there will be two files in there, which will be the MQTT WebSockets and the Simple WebSocket server. The Simple WebSocket server, I just want to throw it out there, I didn't make. It's made by this other guy. If you open it up, it will tell you who it's made by and everything. Um, and on my GitHub page, uh, in this readme, I do specify who he is and how you can find him. Um, he doesn't really make videos as far as I know. He just makes a baller, simple WebSocket server. Um, 
So then you just right click on that and say upload and it will upload. So now if you go here, for instance, you'll see that there's the, there's the two files. There's the one and there's the other one. Now, uh, you could edit this on your computer before you upload it, but I'm going to show you how to do it afterwards. So we're just going to go uh, SUDO uh, nano uh, and MQTD web sockets. So I'm just going to copy that quickly, paste it. Okay. So now there's quite a lot of stuff you need to fill in. Um, the first is going to be the WebSockets port, which in our case, we're going to be using, um, oops, sorry about that. In our case, we're going to be using 8080. Um, the MQTD server, I'm running this on my controller, so this is just going to be local, up, local host. The port, we're going to be using the default port. If you have changed it, obviously you need to put in the other port, but that's our default port. The username, I'm going to be using uh, web web sockets suck, ooh, web sockets is going to be my username, and the password. You should probably use a number generator or something like that. Like you can you can just use Google. I use LastPass, so I'm going to just go in here and say uh, generate a secure password and just go boom 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 boom. So I'm going to like that one. Copy that, and I'm going to pay. Whoa. Oops, there we go. I'm going to paste that in there under the password. And we'll need to use this later because we actually have to create that password still. Um, then we're going to use the uh, MySQL database. And in our case, it is called HAC. The username um, is going to be WebSockets. Ah, WebSockets. Uh, the password is going to be, again, something. And the server is localhost. Localhost. So let's um, generate let's generate this password. Because I'm going to do it slightly differently. So what I need to do is we need to go to our, our Pi and go to OpenPHPMyAdmin, which I showed you how to open in a previous video. So just go there, phpMyAdmin. And you log in with your special password. With Okay, so when you open PHP, what you need to do is go to the Users tab, click on Add User, and then in the Username field, we're going to use Web, Web, whoops, Web Sockets. And then under Host, you're going to choose Local. And the, gener and the password field, we're just going to use the Generate. So I'm just do that, and there we go. I'm going to copy that. And then all this thing needs to be able to do is basically needs to be able to select. Let me just, yeah, it needs to be able to just read data. Oh, and it needs to actually write. So we need to insert, update, and delete, and just go file. So this whole box, you need to just check it, check it, and then copy your password, obviously. So I'm going to copy my password and then go go. And we'll have created my account. So then I need to go back here. Okay, so you can paste the password in there. Now we need to actually create this user account and this password. So let's copy that. And then I'm going to open up a new shell because I think that's the easiest way to do this. There's a new shell. Whoops. Going to tell it to connect to um, this. Well, log in again. You know, do an SSH login like we normally would. Oops, I put in the wrong password. Sorry about that. And we're going to log in. And then we're going to just go ls so we can list everything. And we need to open up the uh, that program. There's a program called np. So let's go cd into there because it's in there. And then if we ls again, and then we go cd into this Mosquito auth plugin. And then ls in there, you'll see there's a program here called np. So to open that, you just go dot forward slash np. And it says, please enter your password. So then I'm going to go here, copy this. Um, open this back up and paste that in there, hit enter, paste it in there, hit enter, and boom, we would end up with this guy right here, which is good. So we copy that. Then we can go back to here. Okay, we need to go to HAC, and then we click on MQTD users, click insert. Um, in the password section, we paste that long string. Super, we make it a yes, and the username is web, web sockets, and hit go. Let's go back to the terminal. So then we go here, we can go Control-O, 
enter, control X, and uh, let's open up a screen and let's boot that up. So you go sudo screen dash S, and we're gonna call this web sockets. And inside here, we're just gonna basically run Python MQTT web, oops, web sockets dot Python. And boom, it's connected. So you'll get all of these my database, MySQL databases connected and you'll get connected and you'll be done. So then you just go control AD to get out of that. And that's all set up and ready to go. So now we need to actually do the front end. So like the web page side. So if you looked at my folder that I created uh, for you guys, there's a folder called HTML. And there's a bunch of files in there. So what we need to do is uh, we need to go here and um, on your, on your, I don't know, the remote side, you need to go here, take this back, go slash ver slash www slash html and you'll end up with this this file and it'll just there'll be a bunch of stuff it'll be index html and a couple other things i've deleted them so far so no mine's just there so just right click on that and say delete we don't need that so delete it yes and then under the html side in that folder you need to copy all of those files into there so let's just do that click upload and boom so now what you want to do is go back to the terminal and uh, let's go sudo nano forward slash ver forward slash www forward slash html forward slash index dot php and hit enter and boom you'll be you'll be given a page that looks like this so what you need to do here is we need to again put in the server so the server is local host the username I'm going to be calling this web. Uh, don't use the same as the WebSockets one because you want to keep them separate. You know, if something gets hacked, you only want to give it limited, give them a limited access. And uh, in the password section, we need to generate another one of those. And uh, the database is HAC. So then we need to go here again. You know, go back to uh, home. Go users. Go add. You know, like we did earlier. Hit web. Uh, choose local, and then use generate, copy that, and again it's just select, insert, update, delete file, and hit go, and then obviously go back here, and then paste it in there, and then go control O, hit enter, control X to get out. Okay, so now what you should be able to go is go to your IP of your uh, Pi and refresh it, and you should hit get hit with this login page. Um, and obviously, you have no idea what this login is, and that's because we haven't actually even created it. So you need to go back to phpMyAdmin, we need to go to HAC, and then we can hit this SQL button. And if you go back to the GitHub and you click on the HA7, you'll actually see at the bottom of it is some of this code. You can actually just copy all of this. And all this is, is it's, uh, it's SQL code to generate some tables. Um, in, a, in, the, in the PHP video, well, it was in the um, PHP My Admin video, I showed you how to manually create tables. This is the code that you actually create. Um, and so we can just paste this in and hit go and it will automatically do it all for us. So there we go, it's done. So now if we hit HAC, you will see we have a bunch of extra tables. So let's go to the accounts table because we want to create an account for ourselves and go insert. Then over here, you can create yourself a username. In this case, it's going to be Shane. And then you can put your email address and then how the login period in days. However, this won't work yet. This I have to show you another tutorial video how this to get this to actually work. Um, so to, to get these, you're going to need to use a MD, uh, MD5 hash generator. And this one is a pretty good one. But if you just search Google and say MD5 hash generator, you'll get anything. And uh, basically, so the username is going to be Shane, so I need to put in Shane, and then it will give me an MD5 hash at the end. So let's copy this and uh, paste it in there. So this has to be the MD5 hash of this. Um, so that must match exactly. And the password, um, I'm going to make my password uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Obviously, don't do that. And then there's going to be the MD5 hash of that. And I'm going to put that in there. 
and this is kind of just a way to encrypt your password. MD5 is is not necessarily the best, um, and it can be it could it can easily be reversed these days, but it's still better than nothing. So then you hit go, and now you have created an account. So now you should be able to go here and uh, put in Shane, one two three four five, hit enter, and it'll be logged in, and I'm logged in. And you'll get this page. And this is basically just a simple uh, page which allows us to interact with MQTT. And uh, it has a subscribe and publish, which is exactly like you would find it on the on the web page or on the broker. And uh, I'll have another video coming up pretty soon, which explains and goes into a bit more detail about MQTT and how it works and and everything. So basically, um, yeah, you you can insert in something in here. But we have nothing set up. We're not allowed to actually do anything um, because the way it works is the MQTT ACLS and the WebSockets ACLS are separate. And the reason I did this is because online users are not going to be the same as your MQTT users because you might have an online user, which will be, you know, you, um, I don't know, your, your wife, your girlfriend, your roommate or whatever. Um, will be web users, but then uh, MQTT users will be stuff like Raspberry Pi, sensors, stuff like that. You know, they don't need to necessarily need to be the same. So what you need to do is go and add a uh, a extra, well, you need to insert an ACLS for the user. So to do that, you go to the accounts, click on, you know, the edit, get the copy, the MD5 version of the username, and then go to ACLS, go insert, and go username, pop that in there, hit the topic. I'm going to try hello world. And under here, zero is nothing, means I have no access. One means they can read, and two means they can write. Hit go. And then we can go back here, and we can say hey, hello world, and say send, and we'll get subscribed granted. And then we can copy this, paste it in here. We can say hi and send that and boom we should get a publish granted and we should get a uh we should get it then this is a response so on the topic hello world a message called hi and the mode is mqtt and that's wrap that's about it for this tutorial in the next video i will be going into uh into some gpio basics as well as creating a uh, a new page that will be just controlling those gpio so I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. And please write a comment about any problems or any suggestions you might have. And uh, remember to check out my GitHub. Thank you very much.